And tonight on Hannity's America, Joe Biden is on the loose. Now, Team Obama's plan to keep its gap-prone vice president-elect in hiding, it suffered a serious setback when a New York Times reporter found his way to Biden this week. The always modest, regular Joe, well, he took the opportunity to unload his eminent qualifications on the reporter, saying, quote, I know as much or more than Cheney. I am the most experienced vice president since, oh, well, anybody. No report on whether Mr. Biden has a higher IQ than the reporter. Now, Biden buddy Chuck Schumer also warrants a special shout out tonight. Now, back in 2004, the New York senator saw to it that a $200,000 earmark went to geese peace. Now, this is an animal rights group that devotes itself to saving Canada geese through non-lethal methods. Now, this was Schumer's attempt to solve the problem of an overpopulation of geese, some of which live on Rikers Island. That's directly in the flight path of LaGuardia Airport. Now, the perilous result of this plan was seen on Thursday when the same breed of geese, Canada geese, downed U.S. Airways Flight 1549. Now, maybe our lawmakers should focus on preventing such tragedies rather than empowering groups that seem to care more about the birds than the safety of Americans. And it seems Tom Hanks has less than friendly feelings for the subjects of his HBO drama Big Love, which chronicles the trials and travails of a modern Mormon polygamous family. Now, it is a great act of liberal tolerance that Mr. Hanks is showing, recently calling Mormon supporters of California's Proposition 8, which prohibits gay marriage, quote, un-American. Now, maybe Mr. Hanks hasn't escaped his liberal cocoon to get out in the air for a while. Hey, Mr. Hanks, newsflash for you. Most Americans oppose gay marriage. What's un-American is tarring those that you disagree with for exercising their constitutional rights. And in other Hollywood news, Michael Moore extends the same respect to his ideological opponents as does Tom Hanks. Only Moore may soon find himself in court to answer for his actions. Now on his website, Mr. Moore posted a photo taken by acclaimed independent war correspondent Michael Yon of an American soldier cradling a wounded Iraqi girl to illustrate one of his anti-American screeds. Now for seven months, Mr. Yon has asked that this photo be removed, but his requests have gone unanswered. Yon has particularly upset by Moore's demagogic use of the photo because the child in the photograph was actually wounded by an insurgent's car bomb, not by American soldiers, as the movie maker implied. Well, we've got news for you, Mr. Moore. In a Hannity exclusive, Michael Yon just confirmed with us today he is 100 percent sure and he intends to proceed with that lawsuit against you. So get ready. You're about to get served. And in a new segment called It's Still Your Money, we're going to keep you up to date on Washington's attempts to pick your pocket. And tonight's segment is brought to you by a select group of newly minted Democratic senators who just voted for releasing the second half of the $700 billion TARP funds, that is, after they campaigned against it. Oregon Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley, who even ran an ad against the bailout, well, he may be the most egregious offender. In this economy, who's really on your side? Gordon Smith in Washington? A decade of no accountability. Tax breaks for billionaires. Shipping our jobs overseas. And now, a trillion dollar blank check for Wall Street. For us, there's Jeff Merkley. Took on the payday lenders, cut golden parachutes, and Merkley says no bailouts until CEO bonuses are cut and middle class taxpayers are protected. Finally, a senator on your side. Well, a senator who was on your side. Now, a politician having a sudden change of heart after being elected to office, well, that's nothing new. But what is new about this story is the source responsible for first bringing this to our attention. It's none other than our good friends at the far left-leaning Daily Coast, or as I call them, the Daily Kooks. And speaking of political U-turns, remember that adorable new puppy the president-elect had promised to get his girls on election night but still has not been able to actually adopt? Well, Obama's taking heat for making seemingly inconsistent statements about the type of dog his family hopes to get. While he initially claimed that they would rescue a dog from a shelter, last week he told George Stephanopoulos that they had narrowed down their choices to either a Labradoodle 
or a Portuguese water dog, two breeds nearly impossible to come by in shelters, according to canine experts. Now, Obama's dilly-dallying and flip-flopping has some dog lovers starting to lose their patience. Perhaps a spokeswoman for the American Kennel Club put it best when she said, just get a dog already. And that is the news.